the final imagining. Imagine this time that you were one of the shepherds. 2,000 summer, autumn, winter, springs ago, work in the fields just outside Bethlehem. Now, uh, you're an outdoor guy. You don't know writing in books, but you do know breeding sheep and raising chooks. You don't know uh, important people with classy robes, but you do know good people with good hearts. And tonight, it's quiet, as usual, as normal. Then, an angel appears. Not so usual, not very normal. <laughs> there, before you, is a huge, glowing, flowing messenger from God. You're shaking in your sandals, you're shaking like a leaf. <laughs> but the angel says, Fear not. Oh, that's easy for you to think that's what you're thinking. <laughs> a new king is born. A new kingdom is beginning. Just down the road, in a stable, in a manger. Mm. Down in the town, you find this baby in the stable, in the manger, with Mary and Joseph and three men in beautiful robes, bearing beautiful gifts. They say they found this place by following a star. You say you were directed by an angel brighter than any star. Imagine you were there at, the, at, that, at that original nativity. Wow, imagine that. Now imagine God, almighty, all-powerful, maker of heaven and earth, choosing to come to earth as a baby, a pudgy, squishy, chubby baby, <laughs> a crying, sleeping, peeing baby <laughs> with a, a teenage mother and a carpenter for a stepfather, visited by shepherds and three old wise guys. Imagine God not being born into money or privilege or power, but into poverty far from the big city and the bright lights. Imagine God coming to earth as Jesus to show us what it really means to be truly godly and truly human. Maybe the event of the nativity 2,000 years ago is more than just a pretty little story. Maybe it still matters now 2,000 years on. Imagine that. Imagine God with us.